Okay, Randall Schwartz here back again, talking some more about timely subjects. In this case, I was on Stack Overflow late last night, a couple nights ago again. That seems to be my cycle. I seem to spend a lot of time, like, uh, instead of sleeping, I'm answering questions on Stack Overflow and and uh, Discord and uh, Reddit and all the other places I patrol. So. Uh, I wanted to elaborate on the previous talk, so please go see that one first if you haven't yet. Um, what I want to talk about is how you can add a day to a date and get the right answer. And it requires just a little bit of trickery, a little bit of understanding, and uh, maybe some informed video watching like you're doing now. So uh, I set up this little test program. Uh, I didn't want to reveal all the answers down here as we started, so I uh, cheated a little bit and I put a little helper in that I've set a, a debug uh, point on, so it doesn't actually do the print until I ask for it up over here in the corner. But let me talk about the code, because code's really what's important. Uh, the save function just prints a label and the date. Okay, so again, let's take that DST change uh, according to America Los Angeles. That happens uh, this fall for us. That's my particular time zone. So of course my um, speech, speech, speeches. There we go. Are uh, biased towards this. Um, and again, that's 2021, November 7th, which is uh, the date of Sunday, the next day that we're doing the DST back forward again. Well, no, it, the time goes back. It makes the day longer. It makes the day 25 hours. And if I start, like I did in the last video, at 30 minutes past midnight, uh, we're going to actually print that out. Let's see if this all works. Boom. There it did. So, November 7th, 2021, at 30 minutes past midnight. That was our first time. Now, let's look at the next thing, which was, again, illustrated in the previous video. I'm going to do what most people do that's incorrect which is that they say, oh, I want another day, so I'll add days one, okay? Now that seems logical, but it's completely wrong, and even the duration add or the date time add functions say, don't do that. Um, I'll let you find that in, your doc in the documentation for yourself. So look for date time dot add. Um, and I add one day, but that's actually adding 24 hours on a day that's 25 hours long, and of course, it breaks. We end up with 24 hours later, yes, really, according to local time, uh, you ex experience 24 hours during that slot, but the clock only goes forward 23 hours because we fall back for fall. And so that's what happens when we add one day. So this is sort of where I left you hanging at the previous screencast. So what can we do to actually fix this? Well, I was answering another question, similarly date related. Again, I think on Stack Overflow, and I won't embarrass the person by bringing up their name, because what I want to talk about is how to do it right. So, uh, down here, we've done these two, so start in one day. Now get the same time on the next day. So, we're going to actually use the date time constructor one more time. But notice at the end of the DTEM constructor, I have 0, 030, 0, which is the same as the 0, 030 0 here. And you can actually use those values if you want. We'll actually show some examples of that later, or we might not. Okay, I want them. Um, I was thinking them, but I didn't do them. So now we get next morning at 0, 030. 0. Now, how do I get the next morning? This is the magic right here. Take the year, month, and day from the start time and add one to the day, putting it into the day slot of the constructor. And you'd think, well, that's kind of obvious then. Uh, you know, we go 20, 21, 11, 8, right? And 0, 3, 0. Sure enough, we'll get that. 11, 8, at the same time, 30 minutes past midnight. So that's, that's one day, but it's not 24 hours. And that's where these long and short days get you in trouble. Okay, now you say, well, that's fine, Randall. I like that. That's pretty slick. Just add one to the day, right? 
Uh, but Randall, don't I have to also do something special at the end of the month? Oh, no, you may not believe this, but you don't. So here I'm going to take uh, t February 28th, February 28th of 2021, earlier this year, not a leap year. And I'm going to do the exact same formula down here. Look, I didn't change any of it except adding the 30 minutes past the hour. Year, month, day. Now the day is 28, which means I'm putting the number 29 in there. What's it going to do? It does the right thing. When you add days forward and backward, it automatically does whole days forward and backward, exactly as you think adding a duration of days does. But it does it right. So now if we take Feb 28, 2021, and add one day, look what we get. March 1, just like we'd want at midnight, which is the next day after February 28th. It wrapped around the month properly. Brought us back to March. Brought us to the 1st of March. Okay? Wow. This is the right way to do this. To get the next day at midnight. If you wanted the next day at noon, you could just put 12-0-0 in the uh, numbers out here. Okay. That's fine on a regular year. What about a leap year? Does that mess it up? No. Check this out. So now we're going to take 2020 to 28, February 28th, on a leap year. And we're going to plug in, again, the exact same formula. I'm not changing a thing. I'm taking 2020 to 29, essentially. 2020 to 29 happens to already be the right day because it's a leap year. Does it recognize that? Oh, heck yeah. 229, again, doesn't matter whether it's a leap year or not, does the right thing. This is slick. Oh, but does it work for larger increments? Yes. Let's take, and this is the exercise in Stack Overflow that basically got me thinking about this. Someone wanted seven months before a particular month. So here's 2021, March 15th, uh, just a short time ago. And we want seven months before March 15th on the same day of the month. What would that be like? Now, one of the answers, ugh, one of the answers subtracted seven times 30 as if there was always exactly 30 days in a month. But think of it even further. That means there were 30 times 24 times seven days. Uh, uh, hours in that period of time which is really wrong really really wrong because it crossed a dst boundary actually oh maybe not not for 21 sorry but th the same problem but it does make sense even with the math here for me to do months minus seven do i need to worry that there's not seven months before it in the year no it takes care of the right thing this is really slick Seven months before March 15, I say go. Dun dun dun. August 15th, that's seven months before, and it's even the right day, and it's the right number of months back. Perfect. So you can go plus and minus on the months, you can go plus and minus on the days. I don't know what order it applies it in. Because that would make a difference for some of the setups. So I, I think it goes biggest to smallest. Um, and if you don't understand why the order application makes a difference, uh, start dealing with March 29th and some of the months. You'll uh, in some of the years you'll start to see where that can go sideways. Okay, so here we have the value we just got, which is which is seven months before March 15. Now. This is great if you're asking for the same day, but you run into one minor problem with this by doing this X day here. And I'll show you now what the problem is. If you try to do it on the 30th of the month, what is seven months before September 30th? 
Well, okay, so that's going to be um, 2021. Month 9 minus 7 is 2. Day 30. Well, wait a second. If the month is 2, how does the day work? Well, now I know the order of evaluation because this doesn't work. This is going to try to make March 30th, but it can't do it. So we get this. We get Mar uh, March 2nd, which is, no, we're trying to make February 30th. Right, sorry, not March 30th. When we try to make February 30th with the math here, it moves it forward to March 2nd, which and still makes sense. Okay, but not really what I wanted. I was thinking I'm going back seven months. I should definitely be land up in February. I should land in March. So that's slightly broken as well. Okay, so what's the trick for doing stuff with this where we want to do plus and minus months? Always ask for, and here's the key, the first day. Just like up here, we were always asking for midnight, no values out here. That way we were sure to land in the day we wanted because we're landing at midnight on that day. Um, but here's the first day of the seventh month before September 30th. So again, the year stays the year. The month is still month minus seven, but we've overridden the day from our original input by just saying one. We're ignoring that it was the 30th of the month. So this is going back a whole seven months plus enough to get us back to the first of the month. And that completes my demonstration. February 1st is the February of the month that is seven months before September 30th. So I hope you followed what that was doing. Nice and clever. Uh, daytime is hard. There are some packages in the pub that try to make it simpler. Um, but, you know, when it's this simple, when it's, you know, built-ins away, just being able to learn, do the right things in the built-ins, why pull up uh, more pub packages that may actually have errors inside? I'm not accusing anybody, but daytime arithmetic is hard. And the odds of people getting it always correct, a little confusing. Also, notice I didn't have to use UTC for any of this. This was all being calculated local time. I could translate any one of these times, any one of these date times, into UTC, and it would give me the corresponding thing seven or eight hours later, depending on the time of year. And uh, because that's our offsets from UTC here in the great Pacific Northwest. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Click all the things, vote things up, uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Uh, tell your friends. That's about all I can ask. Until then, goodbye. Until next time, even. Goodbye.